All right, so today we're going to talk about chi-square, and chi-square is a different type of test where we're looking at statistical significance, but talking about it a little bit differently because we're not going to be looking at continuous variables. We're going to be looking at discrete variables. And while we talk about chi-square, we're also going to talk about measures of association. So two different types of concepts um, looking at discrete variables in particular. So let's, what do we mean by discrete variables? Well, in the SPSS, you know, we have an education variable. But what if instead of looking at, um, you know, 1 through 20, we categorize people into these different groups? where you know one is less than a ninth grade um, education and four is above college and we just have these four groups characterizing people so that's a discrete variable it's not continuous the intervals between these are not equal distant um, and so we can't really just calculate a mean average and compare you know one group or another group similarly what if instead of looking at a continuous variable for it for income we just categorize people into one of three groups. You know, are they in the lower 20% of income, or they're at the middle of 50% of income, and they are at top of 15% of income? So, let's say that we want to see if there's any relationship between income and education um, using these discrete variables, and we can't look at mean scores, we can't do an analysis of variance. So we do a, a chi-square test. And um, and while we look at whether or not there's a relationship, we can also start looking at what kind of relationship or how strong that relationship is between these two discrete variables. And to do that, we just go to Analyze, we go to Descriptives, and we go to Crosstab. So, you know, a chi-square is usually analyzing a, the cross-tabulation of these variables. And we can select education into one and income into another one. It doesn't really matter um, in this instance which one is which, one is row, and which one is column. Um, then we go to statistics. And our, you know, test of significance is going to be a chi-square, so we need that. And now for measures of association, uh, we're going to do this lambda test. We're going to do this gamma test, uh, Somers D, and the Kindle's Tau C. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but these are, you know, if we know that there is a significant relationship between these discrete variables, the next step is asking what kind of relationship are those. And if we treat um, these variables as nominal, there's a certain different ways of measuring those associations and if we treat these things as ordinal there's another different ways of uh, treating these relationships and education and, and income really are ordinal but we could treat them as nominal as well and so just for this video we're going to show you um, these different measures so that's why we're clicking on these two separate categories uh, click on continue then we're going to look at the cells because SPSS is actually going to generate a kind of a cross tabulation for us and each cell, it's going to tell us what the observed score was within that category. And we also want to look at the expected. Um, we could add these other things, but we're not going to just to simplify uh, the analysis right now. And then we just click on OK. So um, first it gives us a box telling us how many um, of these cases kind of uh, occur together. So 60%, around 60% of our education variables occur with the income and around 41% are missing in that situation. Um, and then it actually gives us the cross tabulation. Um, and here we have as the columns is the uh, income, right? Lower 20%, middle 50%, top 15. And then our rows are levels of education. And what chi-square is doing is testing the null hypothesis that these two variables are statistically independent, meaning that there is no association between these two. And to test that, it gives us um, a number, it calculates a number for each of one of these cells, what, what we should expect to see if there is statistical independence. Just by chance, um, this cell should include 25 or so uh, individuals that are ninth grade and have an annual 
annual income of lower of 20%. And likewise, just by chance, we should have 96 people in this cell. But what we actually observe is that 42 individuals are in this cell, uh, where we expected 25, and whereas we expected 96 here, we actually see 47 individuals here. And so the chi-square is really taking into account all these uh, differences between expected and actual and calculates uh, a chi-square ratio um, and it gives us here the chi-square tests and it says that the difference between the expected and the actual was large enough um, to say that it, at a point zero 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 level we can reject the null hypothesis which is that they're statistically independent so because it's so low we can say that there is a statistical relationship and that the no of statistical independence does not apply here. There is a relationship between these two discrete variables. So we know there's a st statistically significant relationship. The next step is to say, okay, what kind of association is existing between education and income? So in the second box, we actually see uh, directional measures that it's going to tell us what these associations actually look like. And um, there's different measures one could use. And so in this video, we're showing several different ones. And the first one, the first categories of measures of association is this nominal by nominal. So if we have nominal um, discrete variables, that is, it doesn't really matter the ordering of it, um, we could use these um, types of measurements and it gives us kind of a, a particular number uh, and it tests you know it gives us two different uh, for the lambda for instance gives us two scenarios whether or not education is the de independent or the independent the dependent or the independent variable so if we assume that education is a dependent variable it gives us this association of 1.136 um, which is very weak uh, if we assume that annual income is a dependent variable on uh, education, uh, it gives us association of 0.026, even weaker. Uh, we also have this Goodman and, and Tao um, measures of association. It gives us slightly different numbers, but the assumptions are the same. Again, it gives us two scenarios. If education leads to your income, um, that association is not particularly strong here, marked as well. And neither is it if we assume that your income is associated with your education. Another set of measures of association uh, which might be more applicable for us is an ordinal by ordinal um, assumption. Um, and so here we actually assume that there's a, there's a rationale for the order in which variables are coded. So for our education, and, you know it's ordinal because it goes from lower to higher education and our income is also ordinal because it goes from lower to higher um, number or, or percentage of income and because these are ordinals and this assumption actually allows us to make um, do more with this data and we see that education as a dependent variable on your income has a positive um, uh, correlation I'm sorry positive association of 0.263 which is um, you know a, a nice little effect of education having on your income and inversely your income having effect on your education is 0.212 um, you can actually look at your chart here and you can kind of see the association here that um, there's much more uh, a discrepancy going this way where we have uh, lowest people the lowest income people tend to occupy the lowest income I'm sorry the lowest education bracket in our high education bracket tends to that association starts to be more significant with our highest income bracket and the inverse seems to be true here our expected values for the opposite situation so um, people with a lot of college making uh, not a lot of money actually our expected value is above our actual count um, and the same thing over here there isn't a whole lot of people who have a lot of income but have a lower than ninth grade education and because we see much more of an association going from this angle um, that's why we have a positive association in, in these measures for the Somers-D for instance gives us a 0.263 
Another set of um, measures of association that you may be familiar with is this Kendall's Tau C, the gamma uh, measure. And both of these are statistically significant, uh, but they're not a causal relationship. They're a separate set of uh, measures. One last thing here, I, I don't think I pointed out, it's important to look at the statistical, the significance of these measures. So all of these were significant. Uh, our ordinal was the most uh, powerful and significant. Uh, on the more advanced uh, side of this, we'll make more videos that will discuss uh, these other boxes over here. Uh, we're looking at uh, the standard error of, the, uh, of these boxes. And um, so for right now, it's just more important just to look at these values to see what direction the association is going and whether or not that association is significant.